Hey there, welcome to Tabletop Finds, brought to you by the Tabletop Travel Guide. Today we are talking about hazards and dun, dun, dun. traps. Technically, a trap is a category of hazard, That's so they are true. all in the same umbrella I learned today. Yes, mm-hmm. so we are talking about hazards. Now, hazards... I'm are... Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tyler. <laughs> I'm Sam. There it is. There it is. This is who we are. <laughs> Some of you might be really confused if they jumped in. We're just jumping right into who the stuff people? that might mess you up. Yes. So, hazards. Have you guys used them? All the time. Yeah. Love them. I've used a few. I struggle sometimes to figure out like where to fit things because I'll have an idea and then I'll look at the hazards later. I do better when I look at the hazards first and then build an encounter to incorporate yeah. them rather than trying to like squeeze them in. Well, they mm-hmm. kind of fit better as a, since there are a lot of environmental things. Sure. So, so hazards, like Sam alluded to, is you have different categories. Mm-hmm. You have haunts. You have traps. Yep. You have simple hazards. You have complex hazards. You have environmental, I believe, mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So you have all kinds of different types of hazards. But they're really good to kind of spice up an encounter. Yes. I have used them in the past for, you know, if you don't want to just throw another enemy and s- more damage soak, you throw a hazard out there so it kind of throws people off and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. without having to just, like, add another 200 HP that they have to churn through. Sure, sure. Yeah. I really like to chain multiple hazards in the same location. Mm. Yeah. And really ratchet up the difficulty. Yeah. You jerk. <laughs> <laughs> That's where, that's where the real fun begins, is when you get multiple hazards synergizing, then it's, <laughs> then was it's fun. It, was it your campaign, Ryan, where we all got trapped in a room that was filling with water? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. yeah. And there yeah. was a monster. And uh-huh. something else. And did we split the party where some people were outside the door and some people were inside? Oh, yeah. Half of you were outside yeah. the door. And it, was, it wasn't water. It was wine. The room was filling oh, with water. Oh, that was what it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why, luckily, you gave us a get out of free you just get have an item that i can tell you at any point and i just told you i wanted an immovable rod <laughs> <laughs> it, it worked it worked i gave you the thing and it worked yeah so we all brought three hazards so we'll see if we overlap at all the list is decently long it's pretty decent yeah and we'll just talk about them talk through them explain how we might use some of them so who wants to go first i can go go for it I mean, I'll start us off with just a classic, a cool. classic, <laughs> hazard. classic hazard. The the classic scythe blades. Ooh, mm, of course. Okay. You can't get it. You just you can't get around. It's like it's the trap. That's it's the hazard that's always there. Yeah. You can combine it with anything. Level four, two blades hidden in a fifteen foot ceiling groove, trip wire, <laughs> comes down, <laughs> slice and dice. Not a whole lot else there. I mean, you can you can move that up and down in terms of damage depending on what your level is and just kind of scale the damage dice. Yeah. It's pretty boring in terms of, oh, there's a hallway and there's two tracks. I wonder what's in those. <laughs> but if you combine it or like hide it stealthily behind a rug or like yeah. do some other fun things, you can make that definitely surprising. What would be cool is if you like had it set up to be a trap that you would hit on the way out. So you like go through it and you're mm-hmm. fine. And then you're like running from an enemy and it hits. You're like, we just ran through here. That is a <laughs> whole. Do you remember the book of puzzles from 3.5? Mm, vaguely. Ooh, I should have to, I should pull that out. And, um, that book is old enough. I can probably post that, right? Uh, <laughs> Maybe. I wouldn't trust posting OGL, anything though. made by wizards of the coast. That's true. <laughs> the whole <laughs> trap is that it's like 20 traps in a row. None of them trigger as you go to the center of the dungeon. And then when you like realize there's nothing in the middle of the dungeon and you start to walk out, then all the traps Ooh, trigger. Dang. <laughs> nice. I'll look it up. I'll, I'll figure out what that puzzle was. Yeah. I like a good <laughs> classic trap. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I have one. Nice. With a bit of classic in it. A bit of whimsy, if you will. Okay. Whimsy. I like whimsy. Uh, I have the Shrinking Hall. And this is a hazard two. Uh, okay. It's from the Dark Archive. Basically, what happens is the hallway is designed to shrink as creatures move through it, making access to the door at the end of the hall impossible because at the point, it's six by six inches. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Six by six feet? No. So is it it physically the hallway gets narrower or is it magically restricting? Yeah. 
physically. Okay. Uh, well, I'm. I, I guess like. Is it, a, is it that optical illusion type thing? Or like, does it happen as they're moving? So if somebody steps onto a triggering plate in mm-hmm. the floor, a um, hundred pounds of weight or more. So yeah. mid-sized sure. individual. Right. Lashy party. Then the last 40 feet of the walls start to angle inward, causing oh. the hall to shrink and contract down until it's six by six. Inches. Inches. <laughs> at the end, blocking access to the exit door for anything but a tiny creature who can squeeze. Huh. Nice. Nice. What's So it's like a little bit of like Alice in Wonderlandy. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, good question. How do you how do you disable that? What's the disable? Um, it resets after ten minutes if no one has stepped on the triggering tile. Yeah, so get good. Get good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you just have to like back out and hope wait. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Huh. You can you can thievery it to jam mm. the plate, yeah. uh, and then you could like walk across it so you could disable mm-hmm. it from the front end. Yeah. Or I guess if you wanted to be really creative, you could fly through the hallway. If you don't put weight down, then Ooh. you're not yeah, trigger true. it. So there's a couple of different ways that like you could get through it. I just think it would be really funny. Like, oh, I walked in this hallway. Uh, <laughs> just like slowly crouching. Like, Why is it getting tinier? See, this is how you make low level creatures terrifying and dangerous like it's a cobalt dungeon the cobalts wouldn't trigger the trap but if adventurers walk in yeah they find themselves in trouble and the cobalts corner them in a tiny hallway oh that's a good idea i like that and then the cobalts are like ha 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 we've trapped you in our tiny hallway right and especially they don't need to kill them but like they could be like, you owe us money now. We're like, yes. we'll never open it unless you give oh us gosh. money. <laughs> Always root for the kobolds, really. I mean, they made them so dang cute. They did. Oh, yeah. You I can't. just want them to win. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, buddy, you're so cute. Cool. Well, I think we all have the same idea for our first option. I also picked uh, not necessarily a classic, but I kind of went simple. Environmental. Sure. This is called Cracked Earth. So this might be more either in a larger area of a dungeon or maybe like outside as you're exploring in the woods or something. Mm -hmm. Um, So it is a hazard level three. It is simple. 20 foot by 20 foot patch of ground that is cobwebbed with cracks and fissures that crumble when a creature steps on it. Mm -hmm. So kind of pitfall trap. Yeah. Uh, As a reaction is if you step on it, uh, it fractures and that creature can use grab an edge. Otherwise, it takes... Falling damage from a 50 foot drop, Decent which damage. at level three is, you know, that'll hurt decently solid. Yep. Ouch. And yeah, it has a note at the end. Some of these rifts eventually lead to the dark lands. So who knows? <laughs> oh, oh, no. So this is the <laughs> this is the baby version of what Tarbafan used for <laughs> here it in. No, but I, I the, you could kind of use this as a doesn't even have to be like a dungeon crawl. Just like you're on exploration, you're going around, and yep. like this is something that happens while you're traveling. Like mm-hmm. random encounter, you have to deal with it. It might not be too hard to get out of it, but like something is kind of like mix up travel time. Yeah, keep your players on their toes. Yeah, and then cobalts show up. <laughs> <laughs> Damn cobalts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. I like the different kind of yeah, shake things up, make it less boring. You don't just have to be like, yeah, you travel, you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, the important thing, I think, too, for the smaller, like the lower level traps, especially, reskin them. Yeah. Like, that is a trap where things fall. Yes. You can think of a million ways why your players might fall. So mm-hmm. just take the stats for the trap and make it so something else happens to cause them to fall. Yeah. An avalanche happens. Yeah. Like, you're, you're you're on a mountaintop and something crumbles off a cliff. Like, that counts as a cracked earth yep. thing. Makes it easy. You're in an old building. Yep. Yeah. The floor. Floor collapses. Yeah. Yeah. Reflavor as you need. Reflavor as needed. Nice. Okay. Number two. Number two. So now we're going to get a little weirder. Perfect. Ooh. Insistent privacy fence. What? <laughs> a level eight hazard. Okay. It is literally an electric fence hooked up to a Stasian, co- Stasian coil. So, <laughs> so, so, um, okay. It's carefully hidden, so it's like a very, very thin wire. Yeah. And if you directly touch the fence, you take 7012 electrical. Oh dang! Okay, yeah. so it's it's a sneaky stretch of fence that is electrified. It's literally an electric fence, or great for farmers who or need to keep their for farmers cattle in. Oh, you know, shish kebab the cows. 
Hopefully they, not. They're bigger. They they don't take damage I don't like know we about take that. damage. Yeah, that's not a bad minor because <laughs> seven seven each wolf probably is bad consequences <laughs> for a cow. A, what? How many? <laughs> it's it's a a CR of a cow. Two, three. Ooh, that seems optimistic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the thing that I the thing that I really like about this is you can disconnect it by like disconnecting the wire. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. it calls out if your party manages to jury rig a grounding device. Ooh. Oh my god! So if you can pull the current to ground. That totally counts and bypasses the trap. So you wow. basically just need to always go around with a wooden dowel to just like poke them. Or throw your cleric on no. <laughs> on the wires and it will ground it for the rest of the party. They can heal themselves. <laughs> I found a grounding implement. You did? Yeah, get in there, buddy. <laughs> Shoves party member forward. Are you able to like do just perception check to be able to see that it's there? Or do you have to do anything special to know yeah yeah it's, it's okay. stealth dc is 30 so if, oh, okay. if you can see it you see it you may or may not be able to disable it sure and that's sure. where like straight thievery to just disable it or it calls out a crafting check to jury rig a grounding device but mm-hmm. i would say if players can reasonably argue that they do it safely like that's where i think that they could argue they throw a metal rod in there yeah the crafting check is to do it safely <laughs> uh how exactly do does the enemy cover up the high voltage sign? Oh, interesting. <laughs> it's like, what's the OSHA equivalent of dungeon Ooh, traps? Ocean uh, sorry. OSHA equivalent? This is uh, something you have to notify it's very high voltage. It depends on what <laughs> country you're in. Some of the countries would be like, yeah, free for all. Some of them have regulations. I mean, this is probably the, the Stasian technology from Ustalov. So I could definitely see this like zombie pen. Do not mm. cross. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> do, I like do that. Do not cross zombie pen. <laughs> Does it have a secondary effect if, like, you try to grab somebody currently being electrocuted? Uh, no. It just calls out, like, directly touch with a tool or a weapon. Mm. Um, but I think that's definitely a rule of cool. If, yeah. If the party chains up and one person touches oh it, I'm going to make it chain through everybody. Well, it's like you, you're, you're not supposed – like, you're supposed to – if somebody is getting electrocuted by something, you're supposed to, like, smack them with wood to get them off. You're not supposed to touch them uh, in real fun life. Fun fact. Uh, the <laughs> – like, I apparently don't know what to do when someone's being electrocuted. <laughs> Look, I did not realize you were supposed to just smack them with you're, wood. You're, you're supposed to use a non-conducting material to, like, yeah, so okay. I'm uh, off. Okay, that's fair. Huh, this is probably a little questionable. Whenever I'm <laughs> doing high-voltage electric work at, at work, uh, uh-huh. and I'm working with students to, like, impart on them that it is a serious thing that is dangerous, okay. I will Choose your them, next words. <laughs> I will hand them a two-by-four and say, you're the two-by-four guy. If I get shocked, break my arms. Oh, and they like look at me weird, and I'm like, "No, I'm serious. You're gonna stand there with the two by four, and I mean, I'm wearing all the proper PPE, and I do things safely. But if something bad were to happen, I want you to break my arms." <laughs> and they like, it gets very serious very quickly. And that's when I'd be like, "I don't want to be an engineer anymore." <laughs> so I was like, I'm I'm gonna leave now. Goodbye. There you go. I've never had to have a student break my arms, yeah. so <laughs> it's gone well. Thank I guess. goodness. Nice. Anyway. <laughs> You guys would know, I guess. <laughs> Ryan just shows up in two casts. Oh. Luckily, that didn't work. Luckily, you don't need your arms to record this podcast. <laughs> That's true. I don't need them. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I know the next trap that would get the entire party c- conversing about the strategic <laughs> electricity. Sam, what do you got? On that note, I'm also going to go slightly weirder. Uh, I have a hazard five. It is the entrapping chair and this is also from the dark archive i would like you all to recall a movie from our youth Ooh. casper yes yes the the live action with christina ricci do you recall the scene where she walks out and a chair scoops her up and takes her down into like the vaulty vaguely yeah I, I, sort of yes this is that chair <laughs> okay <laughs> cool the chair is on concealed tracks and if an individual steps onto the track the chair surges <laughs> forward <laughs> knocks into them deals bludgeoning damage and then it clamps onto them oh, like holds onto them yeah, yeah and then okay. whoop down the track oh my gosh <laughs> jim jim where'd you go <laughs> the chair just swoops up is the damage a lot um, the initial bludgeoning damage is 3d8 plus 15. That's Dang. not, that's not, that's not horrible for yeah. that level. Of, okay. Yeah. So you can, you can reflex save 
to get out of the way, sure, essentially. Sure. Uh, but if you fail, then you're knocked into the chair and you're captured by the armrests uh -huh. and you're now grabbed. Yeah. Now, now I'm all imagining is like <laughs> the track keeps going and then you just have a bunch of cobalts with two by fours smacking <laughs> you on the way. <laughs> it's like the football the football machine for the tackling drill. Yeah. <laughs> Get whacked. It doesn't like signify anything about the track or where it goes so this is the part that i think is fun because then it's like okay you can pretty much determine where, where it goes where it ends yeah. up well, um it just says that it like jumps out so it actually i guess could be like it just moves up and then doesn't move any further but i would definitely have it be like a ride oh yeah, yeah. this is going somewhere really bad <laughs> or like yes even or just hilarious you know or if you wanted to use it as like combat things like you mm -hmm. the chair comes in traps something and then you get attacked like you're one party member down while they're trying to figure mm -hmm. out how to get out of the chair oh my gosh you enter a room on the periphery of the room there are 20 chairs <laughs> and the big bad <laughs> evil guy floats above the, the floor it's a, in the middle it's, it's the anti-musical <laughs> chairs <laughs> you're trying to avoid <laughs> they all come to you oh <laughs> it's like Beauty and the Beast, when all the furniture comes to life and yep. attacks the townspeople. It's that. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have an entrapping chair. We're going to find a wardrobe that just grapples people. Oh, yeah. Same thing. Reskin this into any other entrapment mm -hmm. device. Yes. It'd yes. be really funny. The whole room just comes alive to try to grab everybody. Yes. Oh. oh. Put a mimic in the corner. <laughs> no, it's the stupid, oh. uh, another show from our childhood legends of the hidden temple <gasps> yes! when you're yes! running through the dungeon and like the dudes come out <laughs> like come out through the wall and grab you yes yes, oh, yes! horrifying what an excellent show <laughs> but great show yeah i'm in i love this okay so many possibilities <laughs> yes i was just really excited when i read this i was like this is weird i like it yeah so when i was kind of choosing my hazards i wanted to do three different types based on like what they do to a party mm -hmm. um and like kind of how they might hamper it so the first one was obviously just kind of time right you know dropping them in trying to figure that out so the second one i picked is hazard six from dark archive called clone mirrors okay so two opposing mirrors spawn illusory duplicates of creatures in the hall in an unending un unending tide Ooh. so you basically walk in this is a complex hazard so when a creature is reflected in the mirror a mirror creates a reflection of the triggering creature, which steps out of the mirror and into the hall, and then the trap rolls initiative. So, it jumps oh, into okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then every turn, it uses an action to spawn another reflection of a creature that's reflected in the mirror. So it can have a maximum of four reflections at once. And these things are like they're not, you know, they're pretty weak by level what six standards they have like 30 health they deal standard damage like 2d6 plus eight yeah but yeah i i like this one as kind of like a way to add enemies to a combat without like adding full strength enemies to a combat yeah you're kind of like mooking it up and then you're also trying to like solve the puzzle of like how to turn it off how to get, turn yeah. these things off um you can like thievery to reposition the mirrors or uh you can use like a dispel magic to counteract so you like can't kill the you, mirror creatures you can kill the mirror creatures so they do have 30 so you can kill the reflections but yeah. they will keep spawning okay. It, okay as long as you are continuing to be reflected in there they so keep you could, coming back yeah so theoretically you could just like get out of the reflection and they won't spawn. sure but i kind of like that as just i i did something somewhat similar in a combat before where i i had like people call them minions it's almost like a um like I, there was like a fourth edition thing that was similar, but basically like enemies that like will hit you hard, but then like you only need like a skill check or like one attack to yeah, get like rid of them. Yeah, one hit to get rid of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So kind of a way to like pad the numbers and make it dangerous without being like, okay, you now have six more enemies to like drain. Yeah. So. And you don't want to run that as a GM anyway. No, that sucks. <laughs> uh, but like having something where it's like, oh, they have to like skill check their way to fix this while like fighting actual combat, I think yeah. would be pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. Okay, so this one's kind of a threefer. Did either of you guys do any weather? Uh, no. no. Okay, so I'm going to... My thought process is here is these hazards by themselves are not necessarily terrifying at first, but I like the idea of putting it in an encounter because I think I forget to put weather in. And mm. it's it's almost like the static understanding usually is like, 
it's also perfectly sunny <laughs> and you have perfect vision everywhere. Yeah. And like, I just forget to weather sometimes. There are rules in 2E for heavy downpour and thunderstorms and all the way up to tornadoes. I did Ooh. not even know that. <laughs> yes. So heavy downpour just basically makes it like bad visibility. You might have to make a check to move through heavy mud or something. Yeah. Thunderstorms start to be dangerous. You have to keep in mind you don't want to get hit by lightning. But in general, you're okay unless you get hit by lightning. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it kind of it basically says like unless you hold your metal shield above your head, you're probably not getting hit by lightning. But you you mm -hmm. should still consider that. Yeah. And then all the way up to my actual choice, hazard level 12 plus, full tornado, Ooh. strangely colored or ominously shaped clouds. After the passage arrival of a distant funnel cloud in the region, there's a tornado coming and your player's got to deal with it. Oh my gosh. And then they just fell into a pit and now a tornado's showing yeah. up. Well, yeah. the pit might be better to be in if oh, that's the tornado's true. That's, coming through. The pit through. would actually be a, a safe That's spot. a basement, essentially. This is obviously just like a very dangerous hazard. Survival DC 35. Holy crap. To prepare for a tornado if no existing <laughs> shelters are available. Oh, boy. Oh my gosh. What, what's the time of like this tornado... Routine, one plus hours. When tornado touches down, funnel cloud can wreak amazing damage. <laughs> Man, yes, so that I would agree. Be, that would be a great hazard of like, you are in town and a tornado hits. And yeah. it's like, how do you deal with this? Man. And then it picks you up and takes you to well, yeah. Oz. So um, each hour that a tornado persists in the area, I attempt a DC-16 flat check for each PC sheltering above ground or a DC six flat check on success that PC is exposed to, to the tornado's winds or it's hurled debris and must attempt a DC 32 reflex save or take 46 bludgeoning, 46 piercing, um, and potentially be thrown 120 feet in a random direction, depending on how bad you fail. Dang. Oh. What level is this? 12. So it's, it's I up mean, there. That's high. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to just throw this at a level one character. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. Um, Hazard 12 plus is an interesting one, though, because there is bigger tornado spec out. I was going to say, oh, my gosh, what what's kind of the hilarious aspect of it is like, you know, we think tornadoes is like, oh, any um, you don't want to be in, in the way of a tornado. Sure. But like a level like 17 character would just like face, face, a, check, a tornado. face check a tornado and be like, <laughs> ooh, a nice Stiff breeze. <laughs> yeah, well, the level 17 tornado swarm is for you, Tyler. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm glad you picked level 17. <laughs> In a tornado swarm, the survival DC increases to 34, the prepare DC to 43, and the save DC against the tornado's effects to 38. Oh, my gosh. The and you, have, you you get hit by multiple tornadoes. So instead of like one per hour, it's like you get hit by three or four tornadoes. The tornado brought his friends. <laughs> we could play the movie Twister. Or Twisters. Twisters. Which is coming out. <laughs> this episode sponsored by Twisters. Please, please, that would be hysterical. I want to go see that, though. I mean, it, Twister was a great movie. Yes. The, yeah, I love Twister. I feel like we all need to watch Twister again, though, because it's been so long since I have seen it. Oh, that I haven't seen that in over a decade, for oh, sure. Yeah. So, yeah, you can actually do weather in a dangerous way. Nice. And it turns into a level 17 tornado swarm if you want to get, get really mad enough at your players. <laughs> wow. <laughs> clear I, the board I, I i do like the idea of like you your, your players just like face checking whatever encounter you had and you're like meh roll up reception <laughs> the weather gets dark you see a tornado swarm uh -oh. this could be an interesting clock especially Ooh. if you like put like an eight sector clock and it's like every room you check mm. i click one thing on the clock you see off in the distance the weather is getting bad and you make them not have because tyler <laughs> literally texted me <laughs> go on no, I, I'm just thinking of that uh, that meme of the dude who's mowing his lawn and the tornado is in the background. <laughs> like, you got to do your chores. Keep an eye on it. I just know some of us GMs have an issue with, like, our players want to explore every possible room before we explore the boss room. <laughs> no. So you put them on a clock. There's a tornado coming. Ooh, you got to get out of here. Don't inspire. No, I was telling Ryan. Oh, and, with your yeah, current campaign. Our Monday night group. It's It's very impressive. I mean, and some of you are listening to this, but it's just funny. It's like, to be fair, like all the rooms are unknown, so they don't sure. really know where the sure. boss is. It's just funny that like of every other floor, they've like skipped half of the stuff. And this one, they are hitting like 
the hundred percent. They're <laughs> like, like, we got two more rooms left. Let's keep going. In my defense, I don't know where we are at any given moment because it's all <laughs> it's all dark, and you can only see like the hallway you're in. And I That's true. have no spatial awareness, and I'm like, I have no idea. Where anyway, we are so the tornado hits you in a dungeon next time. <laughs> ah! Inside tornadoes. Inside. <laughs> the tornadoes you didn't see coming. Yikes. Okay. Well, I also decided to go more dangerous. Good. For my third one. Uh, we went from simple to kind of weird to we're in danger. So I chose lava flume tubes. Ooh. Which is a hazard 10, uh, inspired by Ryan and his room of wine. Um, <laughs> the lava flume tubes are four gated channels that are carved into stone that allow lava to flow into a 15 foot tall room. And the floor can withdraw to allow the hardened lava to fall into a chamber beneath. That's so cool. you can continue to fill the room with lava for multiple people who might be trying to trespass into wherever oh this is. It's a cobblestone generator. Yeah. <laughs> or that. Or maybe they're just in a factory. This is where we make road. We can monetize this. <laughs> uh, but obviously lava does fire damage. If you get stuck in the lava, you're going to take a bunch of fire damage. Sure. You're going to be immobilized. you got to escape. You'll suffocate if you're covered in lava. It's uh, it's not great. It's not a good place to be stuck. Like we like Tyler said before, though, it's interesting in Pathfinder. Like your level seventeen character is like, whatever. I bathe in lava every day. <laughs> I have fire resistance times a yeah. million. Yeah, you're. It's funny when like yeah, the 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 hazards of things that should be very deadly just kind of break down. Well, for our like planar mansion murder m- murder mystery, Ooh. this definitely is one of the rooms. Ooh, there's definitely a lava. Room. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. it's on a volcano. Yeah. Yes, that makes total sense. That's definitely happening. People are going to be so angry if we don't do this at some point. If it, with how much we Who talk are we going to play this with? Everybody knows all the tricks. <laughs> mm. We'll find somebody. We got to find out. Surely a we have friends. Unbiased group of our listening. peers. <laughs> <laughs> we have, I could count on probably one hand. <laughs> they would all have to like really remember a lot of content because we have talked about the murder mystery party room house. On very random occasions. It's true. The, the it's first true. time we talked about it was like episode 17 or something. So it's, true. it's it's been a while. Yeah. Maybe more. I don't know. I like it. Add Lava Room. Too. I love it, Sam. Big fan. Home reno. I yes. like it. Ryan <laughs> likes rooms that fill with stuff that might kill people. Yeah. There you go. Every house needs one. <laughs> That's where this is where the guests you don't like. <laughs> it's my spare bedroom. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. So my third thing. I picked a haunt. So haunts I like as kind of a, you know, kind of a mysterious type of Mm -hmm. trap where it's not like mechanical. You're not like, oh, here's the mechanism for which this is happening. It's like, oh, what kind of ghosties are attacking us? Yep. um, Add some fun, interesting mystery and maybe a little bit of story there. So I picked Eternal Flame Hazard Level 7. It is a raging spectral inferno that mm-hmm. rises out of thin air, strengthening all undead creatures within its area. Ooh. It most often arises from the charred remains of a group of three people who burned to death. Oh. Whether in a terrible accident or a deliberate execution. Ooh. And their unavenged souls burn with rage. Mm-hmm. Oh. Hmm. So already kind of got a story hook in there and why in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. why are there three burned bodies? But the thing I like about this, again, it's another complex hazard. So really the kind of main difference between simple and complex is complex will do something when triggered and then continue to do stuff on mm-hmm. initiative. Yep. Where simple usually just happens and then resets. Yeah. So if a creature approaches approaches within 10 feet, memories of the pain suffered by the fire's past victims assault the triggering creature's mind, and then you have to make a will save. Mm-hmm. So so what happens is if you fail, you're sick in two. If you succeed, you're sick in one. If you crit fail, you are sick in three and flat footed. This is kind of one another one of those like could be combat situations where like you're actively debuffing the party while yes. you're fighting. So like you're not getting damage dealt, but you're making it a lot easier to be hurt. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um or like hamstringing the party. So this could be a good I, I like these types of hazards because it's like you don't you don't need to necessarily like make a creature elite. It's like, oh, if you just debuff the party, you just mm-hmm. effectively brought him down a level. But yeah, and it would be cool to like the fact that it empowers undead. You can have a good like one-two punch there. Mm-hmm. Well, this feels like the kind of thing as a GM I would cheat 
And I would say that like a necromancer casted this spell. Yeah. And mm. like summoned ghost souls and then it debuffs the whole party. Mm-hmm. So like then again, like you said, there's, there's there's an interesting battle mechanic to engage with while. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just, oh, here are three more undead that you have to deal with. Yeah. That would have been good for my ghost town. Oh, this would oh, have been dang. very good for your ghost town. Yes. In Sam's, uh, the campaign we just finished with Sam's. We went through a ghost town with a bunch of undead. This would have been pretty on point for level too, right? I mean, it would have been difficult for us, but... Level seven? You could have we like were, made it weak. We were four or five. Yeah. I yeah. think... Yeah, I could have made it yeah. work for your group. Darn. Dang. Let's Frank. do it again. <laughs> From the top. <laughs> From the t- start it again. Yeah. I just think if you have not used hazards, use them as a way to spice up combat. Mm-hmm. So it's not just a I hit, you hit, I hit, you hit. I even think of like your Tarbafon fight, Ryan, where the Tarbafon was there and then <laughs> And like, then everything else. And then you had like three hazards going on at the same time. Yeah. Which if not taken care of, we all would have immediately died. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. But like we had we were able to solve the problem of the hazards while also fighting the enemy, which made him like it really made us go from like, oh no, we are all about to lose <laughs> this fight to like, okay, okay, we're we're back in it. We're yeah. okay. Well, I mean, something. The other interesting part of that is sometimes you got to throw your different player characters a bone. Mm-hmm. You don't want to like say that you're designing for your players always, but like if you're in a dungeon and your rogue has been really active and your fighter's been kicking in doors, and then your cleric's like, "I'm here too, guys." Mm, Maybe yeah. throw them a haunt. They yeah. can use their religion skill. They yeah, can figure you, that part you need out. to like this one specifically is you can either diplome or religion to. Calm down the haunt. So right. your bard jumps in, talks to the ghosts, like throw your players a bone. Bard like jumps that. in, tries to flirt with them. <laughs> I like your hat, ghosty. Oh, you boy. are on fire. I don't know. I something. <laughs> <laughs> something about you got the hots for me. There Ooh. it is. Call him a smoke show. Call him a smoke. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. Can't do better than that. I nope. hate that. You gotta term. call it there. <laughs> okay, end goodbye, it. everybody. No. End, end the podcast. Just straight up end the episode. <laughs> well, this has been great. Um, again, thank you guys. We will be back next week with, I think, hitting up Belkson next week. Yeah. Belkson, yeah. Land of the Orcs. Land of the Urr. Orcs. Orc, 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 orc. But yeah, until. Next time, safe hazards. <laughs> <laughs>